what led me to this field to begin with was that I'm a recreational cyclist. I like riding a bicycle long distances. I've been doing it for over 50 years. And very early on, I discovered that if when riding a bike for more than an hour or two, if I didn't eat when riding, I would hit the wall, which is what happens when the body runs out of carbohydrate, when it's carbohydrate dependent, and you feel really lousy and your performance drops. And so I very quickly became a carbohydrate advocate. Interestingly, at this time, uh, 40 or so years ago, was when the Atkins diet first became popular. And Atkins said, you know, you don't need carbs to feel well and function well. Well, I was a newly minted young doctor and I was feeling my oats and I well, set out to prove Bob Atkins wrong. And guess what, prove myself wrong. Now actually, it wasn't quite that simple because if you go on a ketogenic diet for a week or two weeks, your performance does drop. And so my experience had been only in short-term restrictions in carbs. So we did a study that lasted six weeks and by the third week of the six-week study, people's performance was coming back up. And by six to 12 weeks, their performance was back to or above where they'd started the body becomes capable of burning almost all of its energy from fat. In this process, back in 1980, I coined a term nutritional ketosis and another term keto adaptation. So the first thing you have to consider when listening to someone talk about nutritional ketosis or ketogenic diets is how can you trust what they are saying? The reason is that there are a lot of self-appointed experts out there, but very few people in the medical arena uh, have much training in nutrition, and most of them have absolutely no training or research experience in nutritional ketosis. That is, most people get their expertise by um, reading what other people have done. Now, why should you trust me? I mean, I'm an MD, and I can tell you I had no training in nutrition in medical school back when I uh, went through that process. Uh, but after I completed my medical education, curiosity drove me back to school and I spent four years doing a, a PhD in nutritional biochemistry because I realized there were a bunch of paradoxes between what I was taught to believe and what the evidence seemed to present. Um, so after completing that, my PhD, I went on to do two years of formal training in clinical nutrition. Uh, since then I've published 80 papers, I've co-authored three books. Uh, I've been studying and prescribing ketogenic diets for 40 years. The first point I want to make is that nutritional ketosis is a very powerful tool when properly done. But it's not simple. It's not just a matter of cutting out carbs. And the other point is that particularly in people who have medical conditions, it's not always safe. So my goal in, in, in presenting this information to you is to share the power of, of nutritional ketosis, share the fact that it can uh, reverse and, and or prevent very significant medical diseases, oftentimes without or taking away the medications that are currently being used for those conditions. With this power comes risk, particularly as it relates to having being on medication, because if you reverse the disease and you don't take away the medication, you can have major side effects. Let's discuss what's a ketone. It turns out that there are two compounds that the body makes from fat, and the body meaning the liver, makes two compounds from fat, which are classified as, and I put this in air quotes, ketones. I won't get into the details of, of the technicalities on that. Now these can either be made from body fat, that is fat we've eaten before and stored, or fat that we eat and, and that circulates through the blood after digestion. Fats that are eaten or stored when they circulate through the blood are difficult to transport. They're in what are called lipoprotein particles. Um, and these are the things that you, you, we're measuring when we measure cholesterol and triglycerides and things like that. And because doctors worry about these things, you might ma imagine that having too much of them is a, is a problem. Well, it turns out that ketones, when fats are in the liver are made into ketones, you no longer have to worry about lipoproteins because these are water-soluble particles and they float through the blood, they move into cells easily, uh, and so it's a much more efficient fuel for the body to use. Once it's in the bloodstream in adequate levels, it can feed the brain, it can feed your heart, and it can feed your muscles. Uh, and as we'll mention in a few minutes, it can do other important things as well. Now, how do we know it can feed the brain? Well, there were actually some, let's say, dangerous experiments done back in the 1960s where patients who'd been fasting for weeks, so they had quite high ketone levels, were then infused with insulin, which drove the blood sugar down to an extremely low level to the point where it should cause people to pass out. 
And as long as there are ketones in the blood, the brain function just fine. So we know that ketones are a very efficient and effective brain fuel. We've discovered in the last five years that ketones are a very potent signal that talks to our genes. And some of the genes it's talked to are the genes that protect us from things that we call oxidative stress or free radicals. And this is really important because these are the root causes of a number of diseases, including type 2 diabetes, heart disease, inflammatory bowel disease, high blood pressure, and also people with seizures oftentimes have dramatic results when they get on a well-formulated ketogenic diet. And then it's not so much about fuel as it is about reducing oxidative stress and inflammation.